Welcome. Thanks for joining us online. Remember, smash that share button. If you have any questions, make sure you comment or DM us. We will talk with you or connect with you this week. One more thing. If you guys need loved on or prayed for, we're here for you. Love you all.
So just that we give back, Father, we ask that you just bless it, that it may be used in kingdom building, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Amen.
for the girl tonight. You gotta listen to these words because I love what it says. Oh. Can I catch my breath? He said, he said, he's gonna cause the wars to cease. You have to understand this is directly out of the Bible, Psalm 46. He's gonna cause the wars to cease. He, he's on our side. He's gonna burn those chariots with fire. And I believe what he's talking about those chariots of war. The war. He's gonna burn them with fire. And he's the Lord of hosts. He's our shelter, and he'll lead us through the battle. And not only does he win every battle, he doesn't waste the battle, but he's with us through the battle. Woo.
Hey, what another great uh, worship set. We're just glad that you're here. Hey, our, our uh, message tonight is a little bit different than usual. Um, I want you to really go out and get this book. The times that we're in right now, this book is called Under, Your, Under Our Skin, and it's written by uh, one of the tight ends from the Baltimore Ravens, Benjamin uh, Watson. And I really highly suggest we're going to talk about this book here in a second and, and kind of go through this, and then we're going to have a form set. Uh, so get ready. We're really going to talk about uh, some racial stuff that's going on and some of the things that we did even downtown today uh, with uh, Second Chance Church and our church. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about how do we get over this racial thing that's going on in our country right now. How do we step up and, and help what's going on? Hey, just want to thank you for coming here this evening. And we have a different setting this evening. Uh, with everything that's been going on in our country and, and what we spoke about last week, uh, the racial division and things that are going on with George Floyd uh, being murdered by a police officer um, in Minneapolis. And we spoke about that last week and how we uh, need to step up with our brothers and sisters in Christ of a different color, as well as those who may not even uh, believe. And last weekend, we spent some time downtown praying over people, and I'm telling you that it was very peaceful down there. And I need you to know that there's a difference between the protesters and the rioters. So the damage that you see on the TV are from the rioters. They're here for a specific reason to cause damage. And maybe even some young kids just taking advantage of what's going on. But the protesters are, are for the most part, they're peaceful. They hurt. And there's a lot of things that are going on. So this evening, uh, what we're going to really do is talk about the time that we're currently in. And uh, you saw in the intro where I had this book, um, Under Our Skin, that was written by a tight end, uh, Benjamin Watson from the Ravens. Now, you Colts fans may not like the Ravens, and I know the Ravens are pretty upset, people in Baltimore, about the Colts coming here. But I believe, I'm going to say it again, like I said in the intro, everybody needs to read this book, whether you're white or you're black or you're Everybody needs to read this book. And we're going to kind of cover this book and some questions. Um, so I just want to introduce to you tonight, most of you know our pastors, Pastor Ron um, and Pastor Robert. And then we have the pastor uh, from Second Chance Church, who's also a police officer. So we want uh, Chad Parks. And what we wanted to do is to sit down so that we, you get some insight, uh, both from what all of us have been through or the things that we do and and with Chad being a police officer, he can talk about, um, you know, about police officers, the good police officers. And, and, and we have great police officers out here in Plainfield. Um, and so you're going to get a, a perspective uh, tonight, more of in a forum type setting uh, than anything else. Amen. Hey, let's open up in prayer uh, before we begin. Father God, we just thank you uh, tonight for allowing us to be able to have this opportunity. Father, I believe in my heart that you have called us to step up even further, yes. to step outside of the church building and to go and to help those that are in need. And Father, allow us to be those churches that go. We thank you that we get to partner with uh, Pastor Chad and his church. This uh, Actually, earlier uh, uh, today, we were downtown and, and doing things and praying for people and mighty things happened. And so we thank you for that opportunity. Father, allow this message and, and, and this topic uh, to be able to reach out to everybody, that everybody on the other side of this screen receive something, uh, change their perspective if that needs needs to be changed, uh, but allow them to see that uh, we are coming from a biblical view, but also a view of things that, that we have experienced in life as well. So we thank you and we honor you. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to start off with the book of Jude, and I'm going to start off in... Uh, Jude 1. So don't turn to Jude 2 or 3 because oh it's God. not even there. <laughs> There's only one chapter, so it's really easy for you to find. Okay, so we're going to start in uh, verse 17. So if you want to turn to that or your phones, well, actually grab your wife's phone, your husband's phone. Don't grab the phone you're watching because we still want you to watch. In Jude 17 through 24, I'm going to read out of the Living Bible. It says, Dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ told, told, Jesus Christ told you. That in the last times, we are in the last times. Since Jesus ascended, we, have, we, are, we are living in those last times. We're not in the end times quite yet, but we are living in the last, in the last times. There would come the scoffers 
whose whole purpose in life is to enjoy themselves in every evil way imaginable. And you have seen some of those downtown tearing things up. They stir up arguments. They love the evil things of the world. They do not have the Holy Spirit living in them. Verse 20, but you, dear friends, must build up your lives ever more strongly upon the foundation of our holy faith. Learning to pray in the power, and I preached about that a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. Pray with power. Don't just pray with some pansy prayer. You might as well just talk to the wall. Pray with power. Like you know, you're calling forth God, and that's what he wants. He wants you to come to him boldly. You must build up your lives in the foundation of holy learning to pray with power and strength of the Holy Spirit. Stay always within your boundaries. Stay in your lane. Where God's love can reach and bless you. Wait patiently for the eternal life that our Lord Jesus Christ, in his mercy, is going to give to you. Try to help those who argue against you. I'm going to say verse 22 again. Try to help those who argue against you. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save some by snatching them from the very flames of hell itself. And as for others, help them to find the Lord by being kind to them. But be careful that you yourselves aren't pulled along into their sins. Hate every trace of their sin while being merciful to them as sinners. Basically, hate the sin, love the sinner. In verse 24, it says, And now, all glory to him alone is God who saves. Let me go back to 18, 19, and 22, 23. Because this, I put there in a pur for a purpose because I wanted you to hear the end of this, but I wanted you to hear it differently. So 18 and 19 says, There comes these scoffers whose whole purpose in life is to enjoy themselves in every evil way imaginable. Remember, they stir up arguments. They love evil things of the world. You have to understand verse 18 and 19, so that way you understand the rest of what it's trying to say. Know that these things are going to happen, so they don't catch you by surprise. Try to help those who argue against you. Be merciful for those who doubt, and snatch them from the very flames of hell itself. And we're living in that time now. And there is racial tension going on right now that's, that's pretty heavy in our, in our country. We have a nation that is divided. We have a nation that is angry. We have a nation that is hurting. We have a nation that is in need of justice. And we have a nation that needs some change. And so, um, you know, I just want you to welcome our guests with some thumbs up or some smiley faces, some things like that. Because, um, you know, we re pre-record these so as they watch, they can see you uh, welcoming them. You can even type that in the comments. And, and we're going to talk about perception today. And what is our perception? Because sometimes, you know, um, what I don't like is when people of our color say, well, I'm not racist. I didn't own a slave. And, and yeah, that might be your perception, but that's not really, I mean, that's not really cool to say. It's like saying, well, I'm not racist because I got a bunch of black friends. That's idiotic. Perception is a way of regarding and understanding or interpreting something. No matter what side we may sit on, we have to look through the perception of the other person's sight. And if we can't do that, we don't understand where they're coming from. Um, and we have to view that and, and, and not make them or force them into our view. Like, I shouldn't force you to believe what I believe. True. And you shouldn't force me to believe what you believe. It's okay to disagree on certain things. Right. But we don't have to hate each other. Right? All right. right. We do that all the time. Yeah, we disagree with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so be open-minded as we begin to talk and, and we go through this book um, and and you get to see what, what's going on in this book. And what I want you to do is snap a screenshot of this or, or whatever, um, and I'll put the link maybe to Amazon or something in, in this video on Saturday.
but go get this book. Everybody needs this book. They need to read it. You need to read it with your kids. Uh, black, white, Hispanic, I don't care. Uh, everybody needs to read this. It's very, very educational. It's very good. Um, it's called Under Our Skin by Benjamin Watson. Um, so we're going to go through this book and we're going to cover some things on some different pages in the book. And then we're going to ask some questions and allow these gentlemen to kind of answer it. So in the book on page 11 and 12, it talks about, um, it seems that racial issues have become about one side or the other winning an argument. Therein lies uh, the lies, another hidden attitude towards the racial problem. So why do you think that the lie is that either white or black have to win? I'm going to say that, and, and, and I believe this to be true, that though we should be pushing our ideas off on someone else, we do that. We always want to be right. And, you know, it's, and we've taken, and, and that's been passed down from generation to generation. My thoughts are better than your thoughts. I know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I know. Those, those sort of things. And, and that leads to, uh, well, the next thing that comes out of that is you might hear a person say uh, that he thinks he knows everything. He thinks he's right about everything. Yeah. And it might not be true. And matter of fact, I have found that sometimes both individuals are right. They don't even know it because they're so busy trying to make it their idea. Anybody else have anything about that one? Why do you think we fall into that lie that somebody has to win? I think it also comes down to pride. I mean, there you go. I mean, yep. Uh, you know, our my one of my biggest downfalls is pride. I, I don't want to be wrong, and, and um, I always want to be right. And I think it also comes down to is when you're looking at once which side has to uh, be right. If you think about it, um, Satan wants us divided. Right. I mean, if if we can't come together, all colors, races, cultures, if we can't come together, together and we stay divided, well, it's easier for hate to spread. And I think that's what you're seeing right now in our culture is the spread. And we had this conversation before, and before we started, was, was we're not seeing a whole lot of, of coming together. We're not seeing a whole lot of positive things because that's, A, and I don't want to blame all the media. I mean, let, let's just, I mean, that's just like blaming all police officers or, or whatever, or the truth is, is, is hate spreads, right. hate sells. And we're seeing that in our country because the more hate that grows and the more I want to be right and you want to be right, we can't come together to actually solve what's going on. And so when one side says they're right and one side says they're right, we, we don't want to find a common ground because that hate just keeps dividing. I also find that there are Asians in upper places that really don't want the common man to see what's going on. So they keep up a disturbance, keep us fighting against each other so they can do the things that they want to do. And we don't know. Organized chaos. Exactly. Organized chaos. That's what we used to call it when I coached basketball. We used to make the kids all crazy. It was organized from us. Yeah. They thought it was crazy. That's a very good point. Uh, here's one uh, for you. It's basically, do you believe white people look at police and assume it is good based on their experience and interactions with police and that black people look at police and assume uh, based on patterns, history, and experiences that some of them, or not all of them, but some of them get? Obviously, I can't speak as a black man. I, 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 I I'm don't, saying from yeah, an officer from, standpoint. From an officer standpoint. Uh, I've, I've come across um, people who automatically judge me as an officer who's racist, as an officer that is egotistical, as an officer that's whatever, all the negative. Um, and I've come across a lot of people who have been 100% supportive. Uh, I was in Penn Station on uh, Sunday buying um, my lunch and uh, taller, bigger black guy comes up to me, and and I'm automatically thinking, oh, he hates me. <laughs> I mean, that was my first thought. I mean, it really yeah. was. And, and, right. 
And, um, and he come up to me and, and he starts talking about, hey, I just want you to know, I, I really respect what you guys do. Um, I, I hope that what's going on is not um, kind of taken away. And he was really genuine. And I just, I did because, you know, being in uniform, but I really was a reach out and hug him. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's really difficult because there are a lot of good police officers out there and they just want to do their job and they want to serve, they really truly want to serve and protect. Right. Now, are there some, some bad apples? Absolutely. I, I can't argue with that. Um, but at the same time, you know, as officers, we can't condone, I can't condone anything that would happen in Minneapolis. I, I can't. Right. Uh, I can't condone um, uh, excessive force. I can't condone racism. I can't condone hate. And, and I know there are several other officers that feel that same way, but that, that message doesn't really get out. Right. And you just talked about that on devotion I yesterday. Did. Yeah. Yeah. Or last week. Last, last week. week. Okay. And, and so it's hard to get out the positive message. And once again, we were talking about, you're seeing a lot of police departments posting positive things on their social media because that's all that police departments can do. Right. Um, you know, I look at IMPD, um, they have a, a tons of different races and, and cultures, and, and, and that's great. And it's hard for me to sit there and look at those officers and say, oh, they're all racist. They hate white people, they hate white people, they hate the streets. I, 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 I have a hard time believing that, but that's the message that's being spread right now because I guess it goes back to love is not really a popular thing to be sold. It's easier to spread the hate. Right. So what do you think about this from, from your standpoint of your view compared to a white person's view of, of an officer? Well, I still get apprehensive when I, I see a police car pull up behind me at almost 65 years old. It should not be so. I had a few bad experiences and not even really doing anything. So it, it just kind of puts you in it makes you become guarded. You know? And there are people I know that have been police officers and kind of think that they become a different person when the uniform goes on. So, yeah, it's, uh, but now I have a lot of friends and family who are also police officers. And I know that there are certain ways you have to carry yourself because you don't want to portray weakness either. Now the next question is um, basically, as as black men, and you you're kind of aware of the dangers for your kids, um, and, and your kids are out of the house. But when they were in the house, um, would you agree that at the end of the day, that we really all need to just get to the point where we're family, white and black, and that we're dads and we're moms and we're brothers and we're sisters, we're aunts, we're uncles, we're we're kids, we're grandmas, grandpas, and, and grandkids. And, and, and that's how our culture sees it. Um, and that's how I would like to see for you guys is when you're driving home, is that that's what people see you as. In an ideal world, yeah. But unfortunately, we have to have that talk with our sons and daughters now. We have to also be on our own fears too. Because I know that people have good days and bad days. And I used to go to work, and some days I'd be happy to be, other days I could go to work and I'd have an attitude. And that could cause an issue. In a, in a position where you're on servitude to the community, if you have an attitude and something comes up, it may not even have anything to do with that. And that reflects out, just like a husband and wife, you come home from work. And in a bad mood, you bring that home, it's going to cause other things to kick off. So these things happen sometimes. But it's kind of dangerous because um, the public is in a situation where they can't do anything. <laughs> what about you, Ron? How hard was it for you to sit down with your kids and have to have that talk? Uh, see, here, here's the problem. 
we have we and and I say we have to have that talk. But then, what happens is when the talk goes through, what we've already done is planted in our children's mind that they're all bad. Mm. That's the wow. thought. That's the thought that comes out of that. That's not necessarily true. Right. The thought should be, and, and and we need to start looking at it this way. Every group in society, whether it be police, firemen, teachers, Boy Scout leaders, there is an apple that is rotten in every walk of life. And so what happens is when that comes out, and, and, and once again, we had, like we said, we had this talk later, and, and I'm not going to be here, and I'm not going to bash the media, but I've got to say that that hits the front page. That's our next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm on it. We're going to go right into it. I'm going to go right into it. Great right. Now we're transitioning into social media yeah. and, and, and TV. Go ahead. But And so that's what you see, and so you group everybody. We do that with race. Okay. This guy goes out, he kills a bunch of people, or you see a gang or, or whatever, and you assume everybody's like that, okay? And, and sometimes it doesn't take social media to do that. It's just the thought that was in the mind. And everybody, just, just like you said, the perception you had of the, the big black guy that came in and, and he, he really, he, he, he really was telling, like, that you know, excuse me, about the job that you do. And I'm gonna tell you something, basically, and I found this out. You can tell you can tell the good from the bad, even in the police officers, right. okay? And, and I get this because see, now I'm a, I'm kind of a fence walker. <laughs> Being a chaplain with the Hendricks County Sheriff's Department, I get to see, you know, the good and and the other side. Yeah, I'm glad that I haven't met the other side yet, but it's still and you know what? As believers, now I'm going to throw this in there also. As believers, you can change a person's whole outlook by how you grieve. Okay, I let like that go with that. Yeah. Yeah, now I've got social media. You can jump on it now. Go yeah, 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 yeah. Get yeah, the point. We can, quick, we can skip on to the next one. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you really watch the TVs and the debates on the TV, and, and you can watch Fox, and you can watch... Channel 13, and they're to totally different views. Uh -huh. and, and that just continues to split. Instead of just reporting the news and the facts and letting people decide what they want to believe, they're, they're pretending people to one side or the other. Yep. And so I always tell people to watch a couple different channels, and you decide. You know, what if you try to figure out the facts and do some fact checking. Um, as pastors, uh, let's answer this question. Do you think that it's a lie that you can listen to, watch, and read about violence, sex, and lawlessness, and not expect it to desensitize us? Yet somehow we're surprised uh, when it all continues to play out on the streets. <laughs> I know I've watched some movies where there's a lot of violence in it, and I find myself... How you want to get that guy? Da, 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 da. You, you know what I mean? You, you're, you're feeling for the good guy and what he should do, but that's still a negative thing. I'm not saying go over there and hug him and love on him. And, and knowing that this is just a movie, supposed to be for entertainment, but it does have an effect on the way that you think. Just sitting there, wishing, man, if I could just get in there. And he's acting, if I can get in there, I'll just... Mm whatever tool. But in, in reality, yeah, it does have a place. I believe that it does because the, the, the shows when we were younger were more positive. Now, as you watch them as adults, you can see some of the sexual in, innuendos um, in, in some of them. But for the most part, they were good until, I believe that until we had um, reality TV pop onto TV, um, then I think that's when TV really took a downward slope. Because then it was, it was all about negative stuff and, and, and all of that. I think some of that, if your mind's more mature, you look at things differently. So 
that for somebody who's young and still there developing, and these things come in, oh, that's definitely a bad feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, like, when you're in the military, you're going through things like that, you know, they debrief you on you know, different things. But there's no one around to debrief these kids that are watching all the stuff watching. Or some of the video games that we want to play. Right. You know, you're, you're going for kills. How many kills did you get? You know, and all of that stuff. And, and it, it desensitizes them. It doesn't, I'm not saying that it causes them to go do violence. Right. right. But it desensitizes them because that's what, yeah. that's what their mind is playing over and over and over for long amount of times during that. Right. Because you can shoot that guy, he gets back up and play again the next day. Right. You shoot somebody for real, they're not getting back up and play the next day. Right. When, when a 14 year old can tell me, now, granted, I was in the Air Force, but still military. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've been <laughs> doing this for, for, for 20 years. Right. When, when a 13, 14 year old can tell me more about guns yeah. because they play Call of Duty, yeah. there's, there's an issue with that. Right. But from a police officer standpoint, I can tell you this every time there's a Fast and Furious movie coming on, we're guaranteed Friday, Saturday night, there's going to be races. And so, does it have an effect? Absolutely. Okay, I mean, I'll slow down. Yeah. <laughs> if I see you out there drifting, <laughs> you know what? If I see you drifting, I'm just going to say, let him go. <laughs> he's, not around t he's not around this town as Bobby Wilson. <laughs> him and his brothers used to race up and down 267 like through the building. That's before fix up here. I mean, if you think about it, though, I mean, right. you, I, I mean, that's movies and music. It has an effect um, on all of us, and especially right. um, our our young teens that right. they're still developing. When I was a dare officer, they talked about you know the brain is not developed until you're fully developed, and your right and wrong brain is not developed until you know 22, 23, 24 years down the right. road. So you had a 14 year old that's in the home, and let's be honest. Um, and I hate to, okay, this is going to just prove we're all kind of older. <laughs> um, you know, there's back home, parents were, they were parents. Right, right. And now you've got some of these kids that are home all day by themselves, especially now when kids are at home because of the, the virus, yeah. and they're, they're playing video games all day, all night, and that has an effect on them. And, and they don't, if that right from wrong, really, there's a really line there that really they're not line. really they're not really comprehending. Right. So it has a tremendous impact, just like social media does. Yeah. I mean, how much I I had to pull away from social media, um, especially this week, um, because it was I was so inundated with hate and argument. And here's what I learned through my social media interactions: I am not going to change somebody's heart or mind True. through through. My position on social media, and, and uh, luckily I have a, a great wife who finally was like, she kind of, kind of talked to me. Right. <laughs> and, uh, that wife uh, talk. I yes. Sometimes we, call that the, sometimes we call it the, the Holy Spirit's voice right. through, yeah. through our through our wives, but but there's such an impact. Social media, uh, music, movies. Um, how many of us, sometimes if you hear a certain song, you feel like you can take on the world? I mean, oh, yeah. it does happen oh, yeah. right. tremendously. That is true. So that's yeah. why we try to listen to worship music all the time. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, back in the day, it was like Tupac. You're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when well, I thought I was a game banger in Warsaw, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, driving down, and I hear a low rider come on and start sinking down the seat. <laughs> <laughs> you do that now, you're just not listening to this song. <laughs> That's called a charity yeah. horse. Oh, your back's getting my back. back. <laughs> That's a lot. We've lost everyone right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the gangster ain't now buying this. <laughs> Trying to get the yeah. <laughs> so, so, in, in, in chapter five, it's called Fearful and Confused. And, and, and with this uh, chapter, he begins this chapter and it says, uh, he talks about, I'm fearful and I'm confused. So he says, I'm fearful because in the, in the back of my mind, I know that although I'm law-abiding citizen, I could still be looked upon as a threat. Uh, and the guy who wrote this, by the way, is, is a black gentleman. And he says, in case you didn't know, um, I'm confused because I don't know why it's so hard to obey a policeman. You will not win. 
And I don't know why some police abuse their power. Power is a responsibility, not a weapon, to brandish um, or lord over people. And I would use that in management as well. Uh, people who manage people of other races, uh, you can't use that power to lord things over other people. You shouldn't uh, to do that. Um, and, and do you guys think uh, that that your race is more uh, fearful, confused, or, or a mixture of both? I lean more toward fear, more so than confused. And and fearful, you can put in there, it's a trust factor. Okay. I tr you know, and this is not so, not me per se, but you when you get pulled over, okay. Uh oh, what's going to happen next? Mm -hmm. All right, I I've, I've got to act a certain way. I've got to do things a certain way. Things that are not normal for me to do. Things that you know, well, not normal for most black people to do when we pulled over. And then there's the fear that raises up that. What, what is going to happen to me next? Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. This just happened to me and my wife this past week. And uh, I forgot where we were driving. I think it was out toward uh, uh, Putnamville. And I, I know all the signs, okay. I saw a, I, I saw a four by pull up behind me. It was a black one. It had the spotlight, it has everything on it, and I can see through my rear view mirror that he was running my license plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we know the signs, right. okay? You right. know when they're running your license yeah. plate. And of course, and, and I, I carry my sheriff's vest in my car, plus I've got my badge and everything so that well, I would notice the surprise that they pulled me over. But suppose I wasn't uh, a chap. Suppose I was just an ordinary black man out with my wife taking a drive. And you see this. And all of us know what it looks like. Uh oh, it's the police. They're getting ready to pull us over. You know. Yep. That's fear. Because. You know, you might not have been doing anything, right. but just the idea of getting pulled over. Right. I think the point that kind of stood out to me with, with that was that, that you have your sheriff vest and a badge, and yet you're still scared. No, I wasn't. You wasn't then? No. And the reason I say that is, you know, I, I work with a good sheriff's department, and I know if something happened, I'm not in, what's the name? I, I don't worry about that. Okay. And, but that's me. But if I hadn't been who I was, and gotcha. where I was, I then I would have been. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'd have, I'd, have, I'd have slowed down to probably 20 miles an hour. You know, who held it. They're not going to pull you over for going too slow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let, me, let me ask you this. Okay, so I've been an officer for over 20 years now. Uh -huh. And would. What would you what would you think if I told you when I'm off duty in my vehicle, I feel the same way? And, and and here's my thing. There are times I'm in my police car and still doing this, I will look down on oh, my speeding. So I guess my question is, is it a black white thing or is it just normal inside of us? And it's just a question. Is it normal just inside of this? Okay, this guy has law, power, he has the authority to write us a ticket, which is going to cost us $150, $200 ticket. Yeah. Um, you know, am I going to come across a bad police officer? I, I don't know. I mean, because right. I've seen enough videos where one officer's confronting another officer on a right. traffic stop because pride and ego gets in the way. But I just wonder is that just a normal? Um, reaction within us that, oh crud, it's the law, it's a police officer. Even when I've been doing this for 20 years, 
Now, especially when I'm driving, not that I would ever speed, but if I was speeding heading south towards Florida, um, that natural reaction of, oh, I better watch my speed. Oh, how am I going fast? So, right. so I guess that's kind of maybe an observation, maybe a question. Is it kind of the same thing, you think, or watch this? It, and I believe this to be true. Everybody's catching up to us. <laughs> and that's the truth. Not only do we have this fear now, but people of other races have this same fear that we do now. Okay, we've been having it for years. It doesn't, and, and so now, and I don't, I don't know where that came from because a lot of times it's, it's just been planted, in, well, of course, with us, it's been planted in us. Why would it be planted in everybody else? And I kind of wondered about that because I, I have some friends that, you know, fear the idea of police. I think it's it's fear, but I think it's a different type. Okay. Because of the way that the police were originally started down in the South during slavery time, so it's been passed down from generation to generation to generation. Well, that's like what you guys were talking about too. Was you had to have you know had to have that talk, but then you're presetting that mindset. I mean, there's been times, and you probably seen it in the chaplain. You walk into a grocery store. And you have that mom or dad says, you better behave or I'm going to call that police officer. And he's right. going to take you to jail. Right. Now, this is a five yeah. or six-year-old oh, kid. Yeah. And, and every yeah. one of our officers will go up to those kids that I know of and say, right. you know what? No, we're not. Right. Hate right. to disrespect your mom and your dad, but we're not going to do that. We are going to help you. If you need us, call us. Mm -hmm. But see, that there's that presetting right. already at a young age of you mess up. This is what's going to happen. Right. And, and if you want to talk about how many of us have grown up, and I didn't grow up in the church, but the first thing that I learned going to church was if you mess up, our God is going to strike you. That right. That, there you go. That is a good one. So I just wonder if it's, it's, it's preconditioned. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to take away anything because I haven't lived in your shoes. I haven't been there. But I also got to wonder, is it just preconditioned? And I remember my mom, I stole a pack of gum when I was six. And I remember, I was like, Mom, just whip me because she says she's calling the cops. And, right. and I was going to go to jail. I'm like, no, Mom, beat me, spank me, hit me. I, right. I don't want to go to jail. But that fear at five or six-year-old from stealing a package of, of bubble yum, right. I mean, I didn't do anything to him. I think one of the things on that, though, is that, you know, there's that fear of, I'm going to get a ticket. But I think with us, it's going to be deeper than that. It's going to go past, I'm going to get a ticket. Mm -hmm. This guy is yanking me out of the car. Because and they're going to slam me down on the ground. Yeah. Because do I still have to be this guy who has to, uh, you, what are the three old folks you say? You know your place, now stay in it. Yeah. You know, and you're like, well, I see this guy, he can talk to an officer like this, but I better not even think about doing that. There you go. You know, I mean, yeah. it's really like it. I've seen, I've seen some white dudes, man. They jump out and they say, look, I pay your... I pay yourself. I dare a black man to jump up and say something like that, man. I would say I want to raise if you did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's a great point. Yeah, you can't talk to me like that. Yeah. You know, and man, I'm like, whoa. So those are the kind of things that are out there that, that uh, So it's a different kind of uh, Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know what? But on the other side, too, I've seen some police officers that catch heck. Of no matter what race right. it is, right. and they just, you know, they act, they act, they just continue to write the ticket. They don't get moved, yeah. you know, and, and they'll hand the person a ticket and say, "Have a nice day." Right. You know, you see that too. Well, we don't talk about that part. Can we get the guys that come in and they'll pull you over, or you're having trouble on the side of the road. Somebody stops. They're nice and they're friendly, you know. That's what we need to see more. When we were in school, we had a Officer Friendly used to come to our school. Starting way down here in grade school. Officer Friendly. And what he was doing was showing us then that they're not bad guys. These are people with a job. Yeah. Just like we had. Look at us as uh, pastors. What do you think a lot of people think about us? Mm. When when all this stuff came out about those uh, pedophiles and some of the churches, uh -huh. everybody became one. So, you know, it's just the way it is. Perception. So perception is really huge of, 
of how you look at officers, how you look at pastors, how you look at our brothers and sisters of color. It's all perception. And, and really what we want to do today is really gear you towards changing that perception right. and looking through the eyes of the person that's on the other side of you. Um, when we can begin to do that, then we really begin to look at them through God's eyes. And when we can do that, then we can see them as, as normal people. And shifting from, from that question into uh, pro-life, and, and as believers that we believe in pro-life, shouldn't we also believe and have favor for people um, of different colors in their own homes or out on the street or even people in churches? Uh, the most segregated time of the, of the week is on Sunday mornings. Yep. Uh, white church and black church and Hispanic church. And we all need to be the church and, and really get to the part where we look like heaven and we treat each other like we're all going to heaven because we'll see you in heaven, some of you. Some of you have been going to church for a long time and you may show up one day on a Sunday and nobody's there. What's that mean? <laughs> we know. <laughs> I don't know what side of tribulation you really <laughs> that's, uh, that's a different topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bring it that's part of the weakness. part of the weakness of the church, not the church, not the church of Jesus Christ, but of just these churches that we in our congregations and all these different things. Because Jesus himself said, a house divided cannot stand. And uh, our house has a lot of division right now. Oh yeah. Just when we were all together really working together, a lot of the problems that we have now would be solved. Yeah. Yeah. But we're we're all over the place. I, I firmly believe if the church did what the church is called to do, if you go back to Acts 2, you know, and I love that when uh, when Peter's preaching and there talks about thousands were saved. Yeah. I believe if the church acted and did the things that the Acts 2 church where they broke bread together, they, right. they sold property, they took care of each other. I believe it doesn't matter if it's Mercy Bay, Second Chance Church, Plainfield Christian, uh, you know, Eastern Star Baptist, if we all did what we were called to do as one church. Right. I believe, number one, we wouldn't have to depend on the government. Right. Uh, and number two, we wouldn't have this division. Exactly. I mean, but but it just doesn't work that way. And there's sometimes there's more bickering among church and church people exactly. than there is what's going on in our society right exactly. now. Right. And, and that is sad. And I think exactly. we're going to have to answer that one day. Yeah, right. um, and that's not, I don't believe that's why that's not the way Christ can design the church. Right. And it's, it's not. It's not. When, uh, uh, when you, you, you look back, what happens is, and this is on us as pastors, okay? Are we doing the type of job that we should be doing to get people to start to learn what it is that Christ was all about, and that's love? Are we, are we getting that message across? Or are we allowing the world to come into our realm? Right. Okay. By allowing, you know, people with these, instead of people working in one accord, a lot of discord comes in. Okay. And then this is where it, it breaks down to is, well, I don't like him because, not only, and this is the truth, I don't like him because he's Baptist and he doesn't think the way that I think. Right. Okay, or I don't like him because he's this other and, and, and whatever his beliefs. My way is the only way. Yep. That's the way of the world. Okay? I believe, and, and this is just me, if we approach each other with the respect, God, God doesn't, and I believe this, and I, I'm not going to push this on anybody, but I believe that God will honor you as long as you believe in him and as long as you love your fellow man, no matter what the doctrine of the church or whatever it is says, there's only one true doctrine, and that is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. That's it. Right. That's it. That's it. It's because the word tells us that no one can get to the Father right. without the Son. Yeah. You can't, you know. Right. 
Now, if we truly believe that, then somewhere along the line, we, we've lost it. We want to try to make this about us yep. instead of him. Yep. And we're busy trying to weed things out. But I read in my Bible where Jesus said that the weed, weeds and the tear grow together. The weeds and the tear grow together. Mm -hmm. And I was separated. Right. It's not for us to separate. He'll do that. So um, when we're up here she, picking and choosing who we want here and who we want there, we love for us to never go to the community. Because he already said that if you, see, there might be somebody who hasn't quite got there yet, but I don't know if you ever worked in the yard. If you're working out there sometimes and you got little plants that are growing together, it's kind of hard to tell what's a weed and what's the uh, plant that you put in. So if you pull it up, I know you pull it wrong. And it wasn't rooted yet. How you know when that thing grew up? The roots didn't go deep enough that that's not a weed at all. Sure. It just takes a little more time to recognize what it is. So if we believe in pro-life, then we should believe in young people, both white and black, and old people, both white and black, right. if we're pro-life. -pro if you're pro-life, then life matters, period. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And here in closing, uh, we have a couple of questions that um, Benjamin had talked about, um, that black people struggle to forgive uh, because white perpetrators struggle to repent. Um, so it's important if, if you have been on that side of hate, uh, it's important for you to repent. It's important for you to, to ask for forgiveness. It's important for you to do that because that doesn't, otherwise the door to be able to, for discussion uh, will never open. In Acts 2, 3, 8, it says, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the forgiveness of your sins. And, and so we have to repent and turn towards God so that way we can see people of other color as God sees them. Um, and he also uh, goes through some different things and, in this book, and I really want to kind of close with um, two things. One is we really need to grow spiritual mothers and fathers in the church. Um, both white and black kids young kids have fathers who aren't in the home and we need to be spiritual mothers and fathers right you may be able to reach a young white kid that i can't reach i might be able to reach a young black kid that you may not be able to reach that's true so we both have to come together to help young people and see them as young people and be great spiritual mothers and fathers and put them on our shoulders so that way they can see above the mountain and they can see over the hill and they can see that there's victory over there instead of being down here where they can't see it you know they're lucky if i get to 18 i'm like no 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 let me put you on my shoulders and let me see what jesus has for you over there buddy and we have to be able to 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 disciple people in our churches and really grow spiritual mothers and fathers which i think the church hasn't done for a long time because there's, there's, there's a lack of, of spiritual mothers and fathers in the church. We have a lot of churchgoers, a lot of pew sitters, but we don't have a lot of spiritual mothers and fathers. And um, I kind of wanted to finish with this story that he has. And I'm going to read this story to you. I don't have my glasses, so. Uh, now I want to tell you a story about... And I want you to close your eyes. I want you to listen to this story. And I want you to listen to yourself. This is a story about a girl walking home from the grocery store one sunny afternoon. I want you to picture this little girl. Suddenly, a truck pulls up. Two men jump out and grab her. They drag her into the nearby field and they tie her up. They rip clothes off of her and, and do things to her. First one, then the next, then the next. Shattering every innocent part of her with pure, vicious thrusts. In a fog of darkness beneath the sweat, and when they're done, after they're, they killed her tiny womb, murdered any chance of her bearing children they, to have life beyond her, her own, they decide to take her as target practice. 
They start throwing beer cans at her. They throw them so hard it starts cutting the flesh away to her bones. Then they begin to urinate on her. Now comes the hanging. They have a rope. They tie it into a noose. I want you to imagine that noose pulling tight around her neck. And suddenly, a blinding jerk. She's pulled into the air and her feet can't even stop kicking and they can't even find the ground. The hanging uh, branches are strong enough and it snaps and she falls to the earth. So they pick her up and they throw her back to the truck, drive out to a foggy creek bridge and throw her off of the bridge and she drops 30 some feet into the creek below. Can you see her? Can you imagine her? Can you picture that little girl? Now, can you picture that she's white? Every time that we start to think about things like that, sometimes we, we hear those stories that they're not of white people. But we need to know that that can happen to us as well. We have to know that we need to stand up with our brothers and sisters who need us. Because if that was your little girl, if that was your little girl. Now just imagine it's flipped and they're in the car and they get pulled over and they get a knee put in their neck. The biggest thing that stood out to me last week when we were downtown ministering was a man who was, there was a lady that was screaming and hollering and he stood up and he said, we don't hate you white people. We just want what you have. We want to be able to walk down the street and not have to look behind us. We don't want more than you. We just want the equality that you have. So that's important. That's why it's important for us to stand up. That's why it's important for us to stand up for our brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why it's important that we went out earlier today and we, we worked down in, in the city because we wanted to pray and let people know we stand with you. And if you want to stand with us, and, and, and this is what we have to do. We have to sit at the table. We have to talk. And, and, and the best way to do that is invite somebody to, for coffee or to drink uh, uh, or to eat and begin to have the discussion and understand when they start yelling and screaming, they're not mad at you. The worst thing that we can do is become defensive. The best thing that we can do is allow them to put their pain onto us as believers and just take and take and take that pain and then call a brother or call a sister and say, I was just with this person. I need you to pray over me. We need to pray this, this evil spirit that I took from this person and, and we need to pray it off of me. We need to go to battle. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go to war. Ephesians says everything about the armor of God, Ephesians 6. But what, what a lot of people don't understand is that armor is not to come up. I want my armor to be all beat up because it shows that I was in battle. Never want to show up with it looking nice and clean. Will you stand up with me? Will you stand up with them? Will you stand up for our police officers who are doing what they're supposed to? you bow your heads with me? Let's just pray. Father God, we just thank you uh, that we get to be here this evening, that we get to make some, some dialogue about what's going on in the country and, and, and the standpoint of, of four different people, four different people's views. And not that anybody is wrong, but so that we understand each other and that we can empathize. And not that, that we can change anything, but that we can change things together. Father, we just, we repent of anything that is not of you. Father, the things that we have done this week. Father, the thoughts that we may have had about the rioters, thinking that they were protesters. Father, we repent of that. Father, we repent as a country that we have not treated everybody equal. Father, we repent 
when we when women uh, grab their purses when they see people of other color. We repent when we get fearful when we see a person of a different color. Father, we repent of those things. Cleanse our minds. Renew us. Make us new. Wash us. Cleanse us. We want to repent because we want to be one. And we want to be one for Jesus. We want to be one church. No denominations. We understand the denominations, but we want to make sure it's about Jesus in the end. Yes. 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 So we thank you, Father. Thank you. It's in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. 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 And if tonight's your night and you sat here and you go, man, if you thought this was powerful and you thought, man, I feel the spirit or I feel something that's different from these men and you want what we have, it's real easy. It's all you have to do is turn your heart up to Christ. And if tonight is your night and you're like, man, I have, I've not liked black people or I haven't liked white people or I don't like Hispanics, whatever it is. And, and I want what they, what they have. I see a true authentic friendship there. And, and it's because we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And if you want that tonight, it's real simple. I just want you to have a, a, a prayer with me real quick. And it's not the words that are going to come out of your mouth, but it's what you're asking to come into your heart. And just say these simple words. Say, Father, forgive me for the things that I've done wrong. I ask for your forgiveness. Take these things that I have not done correctly away from me. Fill me. Make me new. Wash me. Cleanse me. Jesus, I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior. And I will walk with you every day of the rest of my life. In your name I pray. If you uh, said that prayer uh, with us, we celebrate with you. We thank you. We welcome you into uh, the kingdom of God because it's more about building the kingdom than it is about building churches. And so we celebrate with you. If you made that decision, uh, down here there will be a, a link to mercybasechurch.org. Uh, Send me a message. I can help you with your next step. Um, if you don't go to a church in Plainfield, uh, uh, you can still go to a church that we know somewhere else in town. There's two great churches right here, a second chance church. Every week, I thank Pastor Chad um, on our services yeah. for allowing us to use his building as a plant church. Second chance church on Sunday mornings, 11 o'clock. 9.15 and 11 a.m. 9.15 and 11 a.m. Or if you can't do that on a Saturday night, we're in the gym here at Second Chance Church. Uh, at the, starting at the, end of the, at the end of the month, um, Saturday nights at 7 o'clock. Two great churches, two, um, I'm not being boastful or proud, but we have two great churches right here. And, and so we just thank you for joining us this evening. I know this was a little bit longer than we're used to, uh, but I believe that this uh, message is very important, that we begin this topic and we don't stop, that we continue to talk about this over and over and over until there is change. Amen. All right. Thanks. And have a great evening. Great day or great week.